Welcome into the FTN NFL Draft Special. We are looking at all of the prospects that are coming up here. Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl, NFL Draft. I'm your host, Mike Randall. You can follow me on Twitter at Randall Rant. And today we bring in one of our experts, one of the Yodas we have here at FTN, Jeremy Popolars, who's coming in to look at the experts, to look at the players, to give you the insight here as we get ready. And today, folks, we're going to start with the Senior Bowl quarterbacks, Jeremy, follow him on Twitter at Popes, P-O-P-E-S-F-F-H. Jeremy, thanks for joining us here. How you doing? Ah, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, I'm doing well, you know, getting ready, getting excited. NFL draft prospect time. Any, uh, whether you play any type of fantasy or you're just curious about NFL, it's a good time. Uh, I think that, you know, it gets exciting. Senior Bowl is fun. A lot of players come out of there. So I'm excited to talk about these kids. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the most important position here, Jeremy, which, of course, is quarterback. But people may be wondering, are we going to see all of the top quarterbacks? I don't believe we are here at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, so the Senior Bowl, you don't really tend to see that top-tier talent necessarily. We see it every now and then. You see a couple of them come in. But, for example, this year, you got C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young are kind of those two top guys. They're underclassmen. They don't normally get that invite to the Senior Bowl. It's normally seniors hence the name uh but you are going to see will levis isn't actually attending so he's not going to be there he's probably that top name there in the uh senior category that's not going to be there hendon hooker is there uh he did measure in but he is not participating obviously because of that mid-season acl tear so well, there are five quarterbacks, though, that we are here to look at, and you can get some information. We have scouts down there. We have people. There's a buzz, I think, that you can get from the Senior Bowl. So we have five quarterbacks today that we're going to look at as potential pro prospects, and I want to throw each one of them to you and get your thoughts here because you're putting money out so much great stuff on social media, ton of insight. You live and breathe these players. First one, we'll go to TCU, of course, Jeremy. Let's start with the six foot two, 210-pound quarterback, Max Duggan. Max Duggan. So Max Duggan, they weighed in today and measured in today at the Senior Bowl. So we're actually going to get updated stats. That was his listed uh, height. He actually measured in at 6'1", 204. A little bit smaller, not overly concerning. Uh, still pretty good size for an NFL quarterback. Big 10, 12 Offensive Player of the Year. Obviously a Heisman finalist this year at TCU storybook season. Uh, passed for 3,698 3, yards, 32 touchdowns. Both led the Big 12. But something that I think that goes a little underrated with Duggan is, is more so we'll call evadeability. He's not necessarily a full-on dual threat quarterback, but he has that ability to kind of hurt defense, especially in the red zone. I mean, he has over 1,800 career rushing yards, 28 touchdowns, which is surprising um, on the ground. Definitely a red zone threat to run the ball. Um, and we see that in the NFL now. That teams enjoy that. You can spread the offense out a little bit, get your quarterback on the run and kind of find the end zone. Outside of that, um, kid has really good mid-level accuracy, short area. He can hit the ball with really good placement on these wide receivers, which really allows them to create their yards after catch. We saw it a lot. Help Quentin Johnson, who's a good yards after catch guy all season. Um, that's probably one of his better attributes, I would say, outside of his toughness. I mean, this kid is a competitor. You could argue he's – got that Brett Favre inside him you know he just he's out there he takes hits we saw it in the national championship game Georgia was obliterating him stood in there took it and still down a ton of points was still out there slinging the ball the biggest thing with him I think though is he's going to need to clean up his mechanics the throwing motions kind of his ability to hold defenses in spots and kind of work through some progressions he does an okay job he's just very inconsistent at it he's still kind of not fully developed yet. Um, outside of that, I, I feel like he's kind of like one of going to be one of those more of a backup quarterback. He's kind of got to me. He feels like he's going to be like a Taylor Heineke type career path. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to step in and get drafted and be a starter anytime soon. I think he could get that potential. I think he's going to be a high end backup with that potential to have that storybook type ending. You know, a Nick Foles type career path where he gets a shot here or there, plays half a season. Um, but I, I don't think this is a guy that you're really targeting as a franchise to be your franchise quarterback in the future, but I do think he has a place in the NFL. Uh, but definitely someone you think who can solidify themselves. Good senior bowl performance here, maybe get drafted as a backup quarterback. Someone people can trust on their team here as, as a Taylor Heineke, like you said. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that Duggan has already done a ton for him. This season did a lot as far as he wasn't even on the board, I would say for most draft, um, 
statistics or even franchises looking really they probably weren't like oh max duggan circled i want to try and target him late in the draft i think this year he took it to the next level and kind of helped solidify that he's gonna get drafted he's probably gonna be that late fourth to seventh round type of quarterback that, that gets that spot but he can definitely again in senior bowl solidify it we see it every year there's a ton of nfl execs down there a lot of players get drafted out of the senior bowl um they just get one-on-one exposure with them they can kind of get those interviews down there. It's it's a mini combine, and they get that first look. And it's less less popular, I would say. So, like, the NFL combine, you got a lot more people there. This, you're getting a little bit more one-on-one. The NFL uh, coaches and staffs can get with these guys. That helps Duggan a little bit. You can get on there. And I, I expect him to kind of maybe boost himself a round or so, at least half a round, uh, which will always be nice for him for draft capital wise. Great. Second guy we'll go to. I actually had Jeremy as a starter on my college football fantasy team. Clayton Toon out of Houston, six foot three, two hundred and fifteen pounds. There led the Cougars' offensive attack this year. Yeah, you were you were probably pretty happy you had Clayton Toon. Yes. Uh, he had a had a really good year in that spread offense there down in Houston. Uh, he did measure in a little bit, uh, pretty close though, six two, two sixteen. So he's he's right in there. He's right in that wheelhouse of that the NFL really wants at that quarterback. They're looking for those upper six foot to six, five, six guys. And he's in six, two, he's right in that range. Uh, but he set a career high this year, 4,704 or 4,074 passing yards, excuse me, 40 passing touchdowns, which was only third in the nation behind CJ Stroud and Caleb Williams. So pretty impressive season out of Clayton tune this year. I think though, the most surprising thing for me was his 544 rushing yards. His previous career high was 253. I mean, he obliterated that really kind of showed that he has, again, it's not really a dual threat at the NFL level. He's not the, the fastest guy out there, but it's that evadability, and the NFL's really going that way, and I think Toon showed it this year. You know, hey, I have this. Um, so I think that really helped him. I think we could see that again here in, at the Senior Bowl this week and in practices, kind of showing off that, hey, I can use my legs a little bit more than possibly what people have thought in the past. But Toon's a really good rhythm passer. He does well inside of almost a predetermined pass. You know, he gets the ball, hits the, hits his back foot, and releases it pretty well. And he makes good decisions. He doesn't really, like, force too much stuff. He's kind of a really consistent, reliable quarterback. However, he kind of doesn't have a deep ball in sense. Um, he hasn't really tested that area of the field. He's more of a short to intermediate type passer. That kind of gets the ball out quick, accurately, allows the runner run after catch to be developed. When it comes to Toon, though, he his pocket presence isn't overly developed just yet. He kind of almost bails a little bit early. Uh, so he could probably work on that. And I think you could see that at the senior bowl. You know, they can kind of work on that and kind of try and get him to stay in the pocket a little bit longer, climb the pocket instead of bailing as quickly as he he has in the past. Um Outside of that, I mean, Clayton Toon's another guy I think you're going to see. To me, I honestly think Toon could get drafted over Duggan um, just because of size. I think they both bring similar skill sets, but Toon's a little bit bigger. Yeah, so. and, and I would tell you, Jeremy, I was very happy in the game in November against SMU where he put up seven touchdowns and ran for 111 yards and an additional touchdown. Not something you think would translate to the NFL, the rushing, but certainly has that ability in case he has to escape. Yeah, like I said, I, he's not going to be, you know, a Lamar Jackson or Justin Fields or even a Josh Allen out there running around. He's he's just got kind of that little bit of an evadable, kind of the Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Not that those guys can't necessarily beat you dual threat, but they're not really looking to run. They're kind of just escaping the pressure in the pocket, getting to the edge and being able to make some throws on the run and get these guys open by just purely extending the play. So. How about another guy who a little undersized, Jaron Hall at BYU, six foot one, two hundred five pounds, but certainly was productive and able to put up numbers here. How do you think he will do, and where do you think he'll fall in the draft? Yeah, Jaron Hall, I think is a guy that again, I think he could possibly be one of the higher ones drafted that we're going to talk about today. Um, he measured in at six foot two eleven, so he is over six foot. I was a little worried he was going to come in under that. We do see these guys, as I've mentioned, most of these guys have measured a little bit shorter than what they're listed at in their school. So I was happy that he was over six foot, 211, decent size, a little bit of a stout frame. But he's had back-to-back 2,500-yard passing seasons. He's also had over 300 rushing yards in both seasons. 
that he started since Zach Wilson moved on. But most impressively for me is he has a 66% completion percentage last season. He's a very accurate and good decision-making quarterback. He's only had six turnovers last year on 376 passing attempts. So in BYU, you're not playing the toughest competition out there. Um, and we saw Zach Wilson, for example, just going to use him because he was the last one, but uh, not necessarily translate too well to the NFL. I do think Hall can just because he does bring a little bit more of a dual threat ability. Um, I saw that he had gotten clocked before we got on here. Um, I think at 18 miles per hour today at their practices, he was the fastest quarterback out there. So he's a guy that really does have a dual threat ability. Yeah. He didn't have a ton of rushing yards. It wasn't like 400, 500, but 300 is pretty impressive for a, uh, college quarterback just because depending on how they use him but he wasn't overly looking to run but he does have that speed he does have that ability so I can see him getting drafted a little bit higher because I feel like his dual threat ability is a little bit more advanced than the previous two we had just talked about um, but he is a he needs to kind of improve his rhythm slash timing throws it's not necessarily what he was asked to do at BYU he also kind of a little bit more of a on the run type thrower he also didn't really work through a lot of progressions they didn't ask him to go through and read the entire field tends to be kind of normal in college some of these quarterbacks they limit them to half field stuff we've seen it they all have to get work through that and i think the senior bowl is a perfect spot for him to kind of start to learn that he's got nfl coaches there with him and if they can start to make him kind of through practice and stuff get through a first couple of reads it's going to be very beneficial for him and i think the Interview is going to be big for him. That interview process here at the Senior Bowl, I think he could easily boost himself into that potential Jalen Hurts type category of draft stock. You know, that that third to fourth round range, he could possibly see him go somewhere in there. Just because I do think that his upside's a little bit higher than the past two. Well, we talk about dual threat quarterbacks. We're going to talk about one right now from Louisville, Malik Cunningham, six foot one, one hundred ninety pounds just has, has compiled tremendous numbers both in the air and on the ground here during his career. Yeah, Malik Cunningham. Uh, honestly, the tough thing with Cunningham is is going to be his size. Uh, he even measured in a little bit smaller than that at 5'11", 188. So he's, he's pretty undersized, but man, is he a talent and he's electric. He's very, not necessarily Lamar, Lamar Jackson at Louisville, but pretty dang close um he amassed over 9,000 passing yards over 3,000 rushing yards and a combined 120 passing and rushing touchdowns in four seasons for Louisville so talking about electric and productive Malik Cunningham fits all of those molds um he did set career highs in 2021 with 2,900 passing yards and over a thousand rushing yards and 39 touchdowns total that season so he had a really big season in 2021 However, he returned this year and was a little bit underwhelming with only over just over 1,500 passing yards, eight touchdowns through the air, 560 on the ground and 12 rushing touchdowns. So kind of went backwards this season. Um, the, the talent around Cunningham probably wasn't as good as it was in 2021. So that's a big part of it. Um, but he's really a true dual threat quarterback. Good accuracy in the mid to short areas of the field however another guy that kind of struggles stretching the field you know whether it's the far hash or it's a deep deep ball um, he necessarily doesn't have the correct trajectory on it kind of a little bit of a lower thrower and just the arm strength isn't totally there so for me with Malik Cunningham I think he's going to be he's probably going to fall pretty far in the drafts and I, I don't see much for Cunningham at the NFL level I, I see him as a backup if he if anything um, he might maybe have to switch positions at some point, how we see some of these athletic quarterbacks do that. I just don't know if there's really a path for Cunningham to, to carve out a role um, outside of a backup, possibly even like a practice squad type quarterback. Just the size concerns me. He's, he's very undersized. And at the NFL level coming in at 188 pounds and being a dual threat quarterback is not ideal. You know, Jeremy, we hear about the athletic measurables and that's what, you know, sells when it goes on social media. But then mm -hmm. sometimes we undersell players who may not have the typical size or arm strength, but can really just make great decisions and are winners here. How about our last guy here, Jake Hayner of Fresno State, six foot one, 195 pounds. Probably have an update on him, though, today as well. Yeah, Hayner, again, a little bit shorter, six foot 208 from the Senior Bowl where they measured him in. But he's... 
Hayner's a tough one because he's not he's not overly exciting, like you said. You know, the he's not overly athletic. He's not screaming in size. The arm talent is good, but it's not like oh my god, I have like a Josh Allen, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis bazooka on me. I've he's just a very polished quarterback. He's smart. He gets the team in the right play call. He can adjust pretty well at the line from what he's been able to do at Fresno to get them in that right play. But outside of that, I mean, he has three straight seasons, over 2000 passing yards, uh, over 4,000 in 2021. And he's had three straight seasons of a passer rating over 150. So he's accurate, you know, polished, gets the ball out, allows his players to make some plays. Um, However, he does have negative career rushing yards, so he doesn't really give you much mobility. So for Hayner, I feel like, it's going to be a backup quarterback type role. Um, he's going to be probably one of the, the later drafts, unless of course we see him here at the senior bowl, kind of impress somebody more of his packet pass, uh, pocket passer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but again, he lacks that high end arm talent. So for me, he just kind of seems, I don't know, case Keenum, like, you know, like he might get a shot out there, but again, six foot two Oh eight. He's a little bit on the shorter side. You know, he's probably closer to Taylor Heineke. He just doesn't have the mobility Heineke has than Max Duggan. Got it. Well, folks, those are the quarterbacks we're going to focus on here at the Senior Bowl. You heard it from Jeremy. Great insight up to the date in terms of measurables and how things went already. Max Duggan from TCU, Clayton Toon from Houston, Jaron Hall from BYU, Malik Cunningham from Louisville, and Jake Hayner of Fresno State. Jeremy will be joining us here at FTM. We will do running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. But, of course, follow all his great content, Dynasty Podcast, and all the articles we have coming out here. We have you covered, FTN, Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl, NFL Draft. You're going to be seeing a lot of this man, so make sure you follow him on Twitter, at Popes, P-O-P-E-S-F-F-H, Jeremy Popolars. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us here. We appreciate it. Thank you. That's, that's what I'm here for. Just trying to help everybody, right? <laughs>